We are grateful uh, for the contribution uh, from the University of Texas. We're grateful for the presentation and the, the, the openness of, of Dr. Clay Johnson, the dean of the Dell Medical School, to really collaborate with us as elected and appointed officials with our healthcare networks so that we can come up with a solid plan uh, for our jurisdiction. We're particularly thankful for Dr. Lauren Ansel Myers, uh, who spearheaded this, this project and piggybacked on her prior research uh, related to uh, influenza. So it's important to remember that these models show very clearly the critical importance of social distancing as we tackle this, uh, this virus and this pandemic. Uh, the data shows us that if we were to go back to school in a week, if we were to turn the restaurants and bars back on in a week, if we were to return to business as normal in a week as, as some have recommended that we do, by the middle of May, we will be in a catastrophe situation like other jurisdictions are facing right now across the United States and across the world. That is not an option. Uh, what we have to do is delay this as long as we can. We have to better prepare our community to answer this challenge. We have to build capacity in our hospitals. We have to build capacities in our ICUs. We have to get more equipment, more personal protective equipment for our healthcare workers and our first responders, and more ventilators so that we can uh, provide better care to more people. This data is not perfect, but it's as perfect as we can get right now. Uh, this, this, this modeling is consistent with modeling that's been done by other institutions across the world, and we have reason to believe in its ability to at least predict the next several months. So uh, it, it, it's really critical for us right now to take this seriously, to do what the mayor and the judge have asked us to do, and that is stay home, work from home, only leave your house if you have to do things which are essential. Um, you know, when we talk about the numbers and the magnitude of difference between what we are capable of today and where we could be if we don't do social distancing properly, we're talking about being 20,000 beds short of hospital beds in a little over a month and a half's time. We're talking about the difference between thousands of lives and less than that uh, which, which could be impacted by this. We're talking about saving thousands and thousands of people in this city alone. We're talking about saving hundreds of thousands of people across the United States and across our state of Texas. And it's critical that we do this right now. Um, I'll be happy to take questions at the end, uh, but before that, I will ask uh, Judge Shara Eckhart to step to the podium. First off, I just wanted to say thank you to our amazing community that has already achieved a 50% reduction in both business and personal interactions. That is tremendous. And my gratitude goes out to our community that has shown, shown such unity to get to that 50% mark. But we're asking you to do more. I'm not going to sugarcoat this. COVID-19, beating it, requires that we get to a 90% reduction in personal and business interactions. And we can do this. We can do this if every one of us, before we leave the house, ask ourselves, is what I'm about to do essential to the health and safety of myself, my family, my community? If it's not, stay home. If it is essential, please, follow the guidelines that have been laid out so clearly with regard to social distancing and hand washing because our lives are literally in each other's hands. There's no doubt that there is, um, that, that COVID-19 is hurting us economically. That is true. But there is no greater economic resource to us than our health and safety. There is nothing better than gathering with family, with friends, with community, with colleagues, and we will all be together again sooner if we stay home and work safe. I want to express my deep gratitude to our whole community for um, joining us in this fight for our health and our safety. I want to thank the University of Texas all of our industry leaders, 
our leaders around Travis County, and also our leaders around Central Texas, who've band together to help us get to a 90% reduction in both our business and our personal interactions. Thank you. Thank you in advance. Thank you for joining this fight. And thank you for winning this fight along with us. And with that, Mayor. You know, uh, there are a lot of cities around the country right now and around the world that are, that are dealing with this virus uh, in, in pretty drastic situations. Uh, the, the, the wonderful thing for us in this city is that we have it within our control uh, as to whether or not we head in, in that direction or in a, in a different direction. And I, I take a large measure of, of hope from that uh, because I like having it uh, being something that, that we can impact and that we as a community get to decide. Uh, I want to make sure that we take a look uh, at, at the, the charts that uh, were presented by the uh, uh, researchers, by Dr. Myers and, and, and Dean Johnston today, uh, because they, they tell us our ability to be able to impact our future. The charts show us, as you can see on this, the, the time goes across the bottom of the chart. The numbers with a 50% reduction, the numbers are, you can see the lines are in red. This is hospitalizations uh, in our city. Now these models are just models. Uh, they take into a lot, account a lot of factors. A lot of things could change. And, but, but based on the best information we have right now, as, as Dr. Escott said, in just a, a, a month or two, we could be 15, 20,000 hospital beds short. Uh, that's going to require us to, 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 to start building uh, temporary shelters, erecting tents, uh, commandeering or taking over or getting use of, of buildings, 20,000 beds. But if we get to a 75% reduction level, look at the decrease that makes. And if we get to a 90% reduction level, that means our existing hospital capacity can handle what's going to be coming to us. And we get to decide based entirely on whether or not we can rally the, the community will to reduce the number of, of daily contacts that we have in our city. You know, there are a lot of charts in the University of Texas presentation, and I urge everybody to take a look at them. It looks at ICU units and, and other things. But I want you to look at this next slide. Uh, this is the, the mortality side. This is, a, this is a very serious slide because we know that this virus has the, the, the capacity to get some people so sick that they, that they die. Now, it's a, it's, a, it's a small number relative to the number of people that will get the virus because it's like, like the flu. A lot of us are going to catch it. But even that number is one that, that we have the ability ourselves to decide uh, what kind of impact we have in our community. The numbers again, with a 50% reduction in daily contacts, we're talking about thousands and thousands of people that, 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 that we'll lose. Uh, that number, if you go look at the University of Texas slides, uh, something over 5,000 uh, in our community alone. But if you get to a 75% reduction, look how, look, look how, look what this does. If you get to a 90% reduction in daily contacts, uh, we're going to be able to, to, to save most, most everybody. This is the choice our community gets to make. We get to decide if we're, if we're here or if we're here. And I will tell you that it's going to take all of us making this choice together if we're going to reduce daily contacts. They're individual choices, but it's the collective number that matters. You know, a day or two ago, I was looking at the number of people that were playing and swimming together in Barton Springs. That makes everybody in this city less safe. You know, the age group in our city that is the, the, the highest percentage uh, of, of, of getting uh, infected with this virus? It's people 20 to 29. And people that are 20 to 29 might not even know that they have it. But when they interact with other people and they do, they pass it. And then the people that they come into contact with pass it. And it passes on like that. 
perhaps reaching the ones that are most susceptible in our community. So we get to decide, but there is such incredible hope and opportunity in recognizing we get to control this. And I think that really was the message that the, that the judge gave you and that the two of us really wanted to communicate to the community. Uh, you know, a couple of days ago, uh, Mayor, uh, Governor Cuomo in New York, who's overseeing a, a pretty grave situation. Uh, he's on television every day. Some of you may have, have seen him. Uh, he was describing and looking at pictures of the hospitals in New York, and he said to everybody in the country, look at these pictures, because this is your future in just a few weeks. And the unfortunate thing is, is that that probably is going to be true in many communities. But it does not have to be. We can do this differently in our city if collectively, which means individually, but if, if all of us together decide that we're going to do better, we can, and we will see the benefits of that in helping to save those that we love in this community and save uh, the, those of us, the first responders and healthcare folks that are, that are at, the, the, at the forefront of this. Thank God for them. Let's help keep them safe, too. So with that, I think we're ready to, to, to answer questions. Uh, hi, this is Austin Sanders with The Chronicle. I'll be asking questions on behalf of the press corps. Um, so first I want to ask, is the, is the current remain at home order, um, is that aimed at achieving the 90% 90, 90 reduction in social interactions? And then if you could kind of like help people understand what that looks like is, um, you know, interacting with three people in a day too much, two people, one, one person, what does that actually mean? Uh, you want to take that one? Okay. So that 90% reduction means if you interacted with 10 people normally before the, uh, the stay home order, we want you to interact with one person outside of your home. Uh, that's the kind of uh, uh, order of magnitude of change that we need to see because anytime two people get together face to face in particular, there's a risk of transmission, particularly if that's within six feet. So that physical separation of six feet if we're in public places that are still open and that decrease in number of those person-to-person -person interactions, as the chart shows, are going to be very, very effective at, at limiting the spread, really containing it. Remember, the, the disease is dangerous, but it's most dangerous when it spreads very, very quickly because as we've seen in New York, the hospitalizations go up very quickly and those hospitalizations are not sustainable. And when you, when you stress the healthcare system, that means that more people are going to die that could have been saved if we stress that over a much longer period of time. So that's what we're looking for, a, a tolerable amount of people getting sick at a time so that our healthcare system never gets overstressed. We never have to look after people in tents because they're best looked after in hospitals uh, and we can, we can provide the best care for them there. And so is the stay at home order, would that achieve a 90% reduction? Uh, we're going to see. Uh, you, you know, right now this, this three-week period is really to give us a, an opportunity to catch up on the testing, to get a better picture of, of what, which direction we're headed. Are we still headed at a, at a doubling rate every four to five days, or are we stretching that out over a longer period of time? It gives us an opportunity to shore up our plans, our additional health care sites, increasing surge capacity in hospitals, identifying new sites of, of places that we can care for people, and it also helps us to buy time to get the model even better. So the more information, it's, it's, it's sort of like weather forecasting. The more information that you feed into the system, the better that model is going to uh, get to help us look further into the future. Gotcha. And so the modeling seems to make some assumptions about numbers of um, uh, ventilators on hand. Uh, does that include like what we have currently, or is that including what we're expecting to get, what's been committed to us? Uh, and that's the number that we're trying to, to get hard numbers on now. If you can imagine, there's lots and lots of, of hospitals in our region, uh, and we're doing this as a regional plan. It's not just Austin and Travis County. We're working with our partners throughout the region uh, to, to get numbers, because this certainly affects all of us. So we really want to work as a unit. Uh, there's lots of different hospital beds. There's hospital types. There's ventilators in different parts of the community, not just in the ICUs. So we're trying to get the total number as well as the new stock that has been ordered since 
uh, since this crisis began, as well as, as uh, anticipating what additional inventory we can expect to come in. I'm refreshed to see that we have many companies that are working at building new ventilators, including Dyson, who makes vacuum cleaners, uh, GE Healthcare. Uh, we're seeing lots of companies that are retooling their factories to create more capacity for those ventilators so that we have better ability to take care of people if they do get sick. Gotcha. This next question comes from uh, the American Genius. They say, uh, we're getting hundreds of reports of non-essential businesses still going on. Uh, so what is the city doing to meaningfully enforce the stay-at-home order, um, aside from uh, uh, just announcing the fines? You know, the orders that have been uh, entered, uh, both by the, the county judge and myself, come with the force of law. So, so those orders uh, have the capacity to have someone fined or to have somebody put in jail. But as a practical matter, this is not something that we could ever truly enforce to the degree that would be necessary for this to actually work. This is something we're going to have to enforce among ourselves. This is something that we, as a community, are going to have to want enough so that we police ourselves and so that we remind others around us who, who might not be, be noticing uh, that, that, this should be, that this should be top of mind. This either works or it doesn't work, not based on our ability to enforce it, but based on, on what value our community together places on thousands of lives here. That's really the... That's really the question. And this is from the... Uh, on yeah. that point? Just quickly. Um, I'm, a, I'm a former prosecutor, um, having worked as an assistant county attorney. Enforcement is extremely important, so there's no doubt. Um, but much like smoking, the way we get to really drastic um, behavioral change in order to assure our health and safety is by giving people the information so that they can hold each other accountable. Um, it's this kind of information that's going to make it possible for children to educate their parents, for parents to educate their parents, for businesses to hold each other accountable, to say, really, we have got to get to a 90% reduction in personal and business interactions if our community hopes to meet this threat. Um, enforcement by uh, law enforcement agencies um, will be a last resort. We want to use our law enforcement agencies to educate and to assist people to the greatest extent possible in getting this kind of information out so that we can help each other in this fight against COVID-19. Uh, so the next uh, questions are from the statesman regarding homelessness. Um, what specific steps is the city taking uh, to prevent this, the spread of COVID-19 among people experiencing homelessness? Um, are there places where they'll be able to go to isolate uh, or quarantine um, if they get sick? And, and just kind of how much of an impact would that community have on the hospital, the local hospital system? So as we're developing our emergency response, there's been particular attention paid to those of us that are the most susceptible in our community. And those that are experiencing homelessness in our community are, are, are in that group. Uh, we have uh, rooms that are available right now. Uh, so that if someone uh, experiencing homelessness in our community uh, is testing positive, uh, they can be quarantined. Uh, we're also uh, uh, getting and putting online uh, larger spaces. Uh, uh, we're looking at, and I think in the, in the process of obtaining uh, hotels uh, and other opportunities so that if it requires a larger number of people, we're able to handle that. But in the short term, in the immediate term, if we started running into that situation tonight, uh, we're prepared to, uh, to, to make sure that those people and the impacted people are, are separated. That does bring to mind the people that are most susceptible of this. You know, we should be trying to put a cocoon around the folks in our community that are, that are older uh, and, and have um, uh, compromised immune systems. Uh, and we should all be trying to do that with people in our family. That's why you have the orders that say, you know, don't go visit nursing homes uh, right now. Uh, if you have someone who is older living in your home, you know, try to avoid the contact that, that they have, even with, with grandchildren and the like who are out 
uh, uh, interacting with, with other people. Try to, try to, let, we, we should try to put a cocoon around those of us that, that, that we're trying to protect the most because they're the most susceptible. Uh, we got one from CBS Austin. Uh, regarding concerns of hospital overcapacity, what resources are the city and county looking into to combat potential sh shortages in beds uh, or supplies? Um, what, if any, places are being considered to serve as backup locations for accommodating, accommodating those needing hospitalization? Uh, so we have a num number of options. Uh, first, we have the ability to expand capacity within our current hospitals. Uh, in addition to that, we have other healthcare settings uh, that's like uh, surgical hospitals that aren't seeing patients now. Uh, we have other healthcare facilities. We have, ho we have facilities that used to be hospitals. Uh, and we're looking at all those options as, as opportunities to expand uh, our bed capacity, our ICU capacity. In addition to that, we are looking at other spaces, including hotels, uh, that we can use to house people with uh, more mi minor needs, uh, as well as the possibility of, of turning hotels into hospitals if we need to. Uh, and so this one is from Community Impact. They're asking, uh, does Travis County or the greater Austin area have any contingency plan to accommodate more rural counties uh, bordering the greater Austin MSA, which are typically far less stocked with available beds than the metro areas, um, should there be a need? So we are working closely with our regional partners on this. Uh, this is uh, partly through our Capital Area of Texas Regional Advisory Council. We have bed counts of all the beds within our region. Uh, and we're working closely with them to ensure that we are working as one unit together on this issue. We have many folks who uh, work in Travis County and live in a different county. We have folks who live in Travis County and work outside of Travis County. So we really have to do work together on this. Uh, you, you know, we recognize the, uh, the fact that our rural communities have less hospital and bed capacity, they have less redundancy, they have less public health resources. So the city of Austin and Travis County uh, is serving as a resource for all of our region so that we can ensure that our partners and our friends are well taken care of. Uh, and this is from Kate. Also, I want to assure uh, those who are listening and viewing that we do have a, a tremendous collaboration regionally. So we have, uh, the mayor has been on uh, regular phone calls with all of the major metro um, uh, mayors. Uh, I have also been on a continual text string with all of the county judges in every single one of the major metros across the state as well as on a text string and frequent contact with every municipality inside Travis County as well as the counties surrounding Travis County. The reason for that is obvious. As major metropolitan areas, we do absorb a lot of the responsibility for the health care um, that goes on in our suburban and our rural counties. And we are proud of that. We are proud to play a role in a health care network um, that should be statewide. Um, we would prefer to have a statewide strategy. In the absence of a statewide strategy, we are working very collaboratively regionally and across regions throughout the state of Texas. And this is from KUT. Uh, it's about enforcement, but specifically um, if APD has any plans to break up uh, groups that are still gathering on the hike and bike trails. We've seen the photos at Barton Springs that have been really distressing to people big public gatherings like that, does APD have a plan to deal with those? So whenever we, 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 we find those, uh, uh, our law enforcement are, are stepping out to, to address them. Uh, I've been actually encouraged by some of the pictures I've seen of Barton Springs both before we issued our orders and, and after. Uh, but if we're going to get to 90 percent, then there's still work to be, to be done. Uh, and again, uh, we can put out all of our police, we can put out all of our code enforcement, uh, and we're not going to get to 90 percent unless this community decides collectively that it's important to get to 90 percent. And if the community decides that collectively, then we, have, then, then, then we can get there. Uh, this is from KXAN. Um, in a UT medical call today, Dr. Clay Johnston uh, with the Dell Med School said that the city could move patients uh, to places like the Irwin Center, Convention Center, or old hospitals in Austin um, if we hit capacity, uh, hospital capacity. So are those viable possibilities that the city is exploring? 
So as I said before, we're looking at a number of different options. Some of those include large spaces, uh, like the ones mentioned. Uh, other options are, are hotel rooms, where we can physically separate individual people. Uh, uh, hotels are, are, are more similar to hospitals than, than convention centers are. Uh, but we may have options to, uh, to do some of both, depending upon the situation. Uh, we do have multiple teams working on, on these very issues right now to identify the best uh, sites for, for use, uh, both as, as hospital type sites as well as shelter type of sites for those who, who don't have a place to go to. We want to be very clear that if we have individuals who are positive for COVID-19, their home situation needs to be safe. It needs to be effective at preventing spread even with, within the home. So some of those things involved, is there a separate room that that individual can stay in? Are there uh, few enough people in the household to limit social distancing? Other important factors are, is there somebody at home who is elderly or who is at high risk for a complication? If that's the case, we want to offer a, a place for those individuals to stay where they can not risk the individuals at home. Uh, so this is from uh, Univision. Uh, is there any evidence or data that shows that the uh, shelter in place order is actually influencing people to stay home? Uh, so, uh, Dean Johnston today mentioned uh, a couple of sources of, uh, of data on the impact of shelter in place based on the proximity of cellular pho phones to one another. Uh, that shows that it's having an impact. It's not nearly where we need it to be. Uh, you know, we're happy to say that Texas is scoring an A on that, but that only gives us to about 50 percent. We've got to do better. Uh, so the, the city council is set to approve a, a, a really sweeping resolution aimed at providing economic relief to uh, people all throughout the city. Um, and, you know, people are really needing assistance now. So, Mayor, when do you think people actually begin to see um, that assistance arriving from those um, actions the city staff is being directed to take? Just as soon as we can, and, 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 I'm, and I don't have a real good answer to that question yet. Uh, we all have been leaning into the federal government because that's really where the, the, the greatest assistance can come at a level that will be the most meaningful. Uh, I'm real appreciative that the federal government passed what it did this morning. Uh, that's going to be bringing checks to, to, to many people, uh, most people. Uh, in our in our community, uh, the city, uh, by the resolution that we have, is 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 directing and, and having our economic development department to to start stepping forward with things like rental assistance and mortgage assistance. Uh, the the social service agencies at both the city and the county are taking a look at redistributing the funding that we give to to to, to focus it and direct it uh, on the people that need it the most. We have some folks in our community that aren't going to be able to take advantage of unemployment insurance because they weren't employees. Uh, we have some people that are not as connected with the, with the government as others. Uh, and, and we as a city and a community need to make sure that we are reaching to everybody in our community to make sure that they're getting the help that they need just as quickly as we absolutely can. So is, is, uh, this is from another from the American Genius. Uh, is the city considering any residential uh, rent freezes given the rise in layoffs and, and furloughs? So at this point, uh, our advice is we're, we don't have the power to be able to, to, to give a rent freeze um, uh, or to, uh, to a mortgage holder to, to, to give them the ability not to have to make mortgage payments or the like. But what we can do and what uh, the city council is going to be moving forward today and what we have already done tries to get us as close as we can. Austin Energy and Austin Water will not be cutting off the power to anyone during this period of time uh, if they can't pay their, their bills. And, and while rent continues to accrue, uh, the action that the city council takes today and an order that I've, that I've entered uh, today uh, says that we're not going to either hear or be able to initiate infection uh, proceedings. Uh, so we're doing what we can in order to pe keep people uh, in their homes uh, and not being kicked out uh, as we figure out exactly what it is that we're facing here. You know, part of this work, everybody reducing the number of, of interactions is going to give us more time to put everything in place. 
And from the statesman, what is the average length of stay for someone who has to be hospitalized for COVID-19? And, and uh, why are some tests taking nine days to return as opposed to the three to four days that patients are being told? So there's some variability in the hospital stay. The, uh, the ICU uh, hospital length of stay used in this model was about 10 days. Uh, there's some variability for non-ICU hospitalization uh, between five and 10 days. Really, it, it depends on the individual situation. It depends on uh, uh, the level of underlying medical illness in the individual, their age. All of those things are gonna impact the, that individual length of stay. Thank you so much. Will Dupree here again in the KXA and live studio. That was the conclusion of a press conference with Travis County Judge Sarah Eckhart, Austin Mayor Steve Adler, and Dr. Mark Escott, the interim health authority for Austin Travis County. What they were talking about was this new data that was released by the University of Texas at Austin. Some researchers have been using this pandemic modeling tool to be able to kind of forecast what impact COVID-19 could have on our hospital capacity in the Austin area. And it's alarming. Um, what the data is saying is that if people do not decrease their human to human interaction, so face-to-face -face interactions, or keep that six feet distance when you're with other people, if you don't reduce that by 90%, then our hospitals could reach capacity within about four weeks. That is no time at all. The judge did say that she is encouraged by people decreasing their social interactions and their business interactions by 50%. However, all those leaders that just spoke a minute ago said more needs to be done to be able to reach that optimal place where we better protect ourselves here in our community. So if you would like to find out more about that particular modeling data, we have some website um, some web articles, I should say, uh, that we've been working on all day to be able to provide that for you, so you can check that out. If you're watching on Facebook, we've shared that particular information on there um, in the live comments that are running right now at the moment, but you can head over to kxan.com or check out the KXAN News app on your smartphone. It's available there as well. You can do that because uh, we want to be able to put this out there to reiterate the point that reducing your social distance, reducing or I should say increasing your social distance and reducing that person-to-person -person contact will have such a big impact. All of these public health experts, all these elected leaders who are receiving that information and sharing it with you are saying the same thing. It is consistent. As the mayor said, and I thought that was pretty sound advice, it is now on us to be able to reduce that exposure from each other and to protect each other from this particular virus, which does not seem to have an end at this point. Take a look at these numbers. These are the latest numbers provided to us about positive cases of COVID-19. 119 in Travis County, 27 now in Williamson County, and 11 in Hayes. Across the state, there are now more than 1,400 positive cases and 18 deaths related to COVID-19. More than 21,000 people have also been tested for the virus, according to the Department of State Health Services. The governor provided some new information about that not too long ago. I also want to share one thing is that, um, you know, outdoor activity is still allowed at this point. You can still go and walk or bike or run uh, or take a hike somewhere. However, if you're going out with somebody, you're asked to be able to provide that six foot distance because that's the safe um, kind of area that if you cough or you sneeze, it will potentially not affect that person if you're six feet apart. It's just a safe practice. Mm -hmm. But um, they're asking you again, if, if you do do that, that you really monitor and ask yourself before you head out of your house, is what I'm doing essential? And outdoor activity is essential because spending so much time otherwise indoors will affect you. And then that's what a lot of the officials are saying. But keep that in mind. 
when you're heading out. We're doing that here. We're practicing social distancing at work. I'm deemed an essential employee so that I can come and speak to you all on this platform and share information. However, we are doing other practices behind the scenes to space people out, to make sure other people are working at home. A large share of people are working at home right now so that we are not close together in tight quarters or anything like that. So we're doing our part. You should be doing your part. It's very clear. All this information is on our website, kxan.com and the KXAN News app. We hope you check that out and keep watching us here on KXAN Live as we get new information because we're trying to share uh, what's up to date and what's newest with you as soon as we can. I appreciate you all watching for as long as you did. We have a newscast coming up at 435, 6 and 10. That's on KXAN on NBC and then at 9 o'clock on the CW Austin so you can watch all throughout the day to be able to find out the latest information we do appreciate you all trusting us at this critical time. Thank you all again for watching, and we'll see you back here another time.